Hello, I'm Graham Fitch coming to you from Steinway Hall in London. I'm about to give you a few ideas on how to make scale practice interesting and absorbing. But before I start, just like to invite you to hit the subscribe button and you will be the first to hear about any new videos that come out on the Pianist Magazine's YouTube channel. So scales often uh, are associated with boredom and drudgery amongst pianists, or particularly students. There's no way of escaping them because we do need to know our musical alphabet. We need to know how uh, scales work, how they sound, how they feel, um, and how they relate to each other. So I'm assuming for the purposes of this video that you already know your scales, that you're, I'm not going to talk much about technique as such, but I'm going to talk about practice technique, which actually is a branch of technique if you think about it. Some years ago, I was giving a class on scales and there was this one person who got up and played a scale with all sorts of technical problems and I didn't really know where to begin to help her because it would have been a major mission just to have got her to move correctly. So I thought, let me try something a bit different. And I asked her if she knew Beethoven's third concerto. And she told me that she knew this concerto. Um, and so I said, well, let's try a C minor scale in the style of that concerto, since it starts with a C minor scale. So she thought about it, got ready. And was able to play the scale miles better because she had a character in mind. It wasn't just a boring scale, devoid of rhythm, devoid of character devoid of meaning. It was an electric scale in the style of Beethoven. So we can do this with scales. If we're teachers, we can ask our pupils to play a scale. How about E major, leggero, in the style of Mendelssohn? What about B flat minor scale, slowly, largo e mesto? going to do one octave. Could you feel there I was giving that shape so that it sounded interesting? So those are some thoughts. Now, of course, the other thing we can do is to vary the touch between the two hands. I quite like to suggest this. And maybe change it on the way down. So we can do legato staccato scales. We can also do two note slur scales. And then mix that up with, let's say, a legato. And then change on the way down. That's a, a, a nice way of keeping engaged with the scale. Let me try a couple other things. Now, I like to ask my students who are maybe struggling a little bit with polyrhythms, that's twos against threes, if they would perhaps play their scale in a two against three. So if we are wanting the threes in the right hand and the twos in the left hand, let me do it slowly. I've got that polyrhythm, quick cup of tea or fried fish and chips or the new kid on the block, one popper dumb. Um, whichever way helps you to feel that polyrhythm. And down. We can do it the other way around with the threes in the left hand. I've just got to remember to start two octaves apart. And back down again. Now, what about uh, this idea? Think of a, a well-known song. Uh, see if you can guess what this is. I'll tell you afterwards, but see if you can guess what it is. Did you guess that? Dreaming of a White Christmas. So as a teacher, you could suggest 
that the scale be played either in the rhythm of a particular song, or perhaps there's a rhythmic difficulty in one of the pieces that your student is playing that could perhaps be solved first by using a scale before going back into the piece. Um, some people struggle with this Bartok. The time signature there is two plus two plus three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. A very neat idea to, pr to play a few scales using that pulsing. So it could be this. Can you feel it? One, two, one, two, one, two, three. So once we've got the feeling of that rhythm in a scale, we could transfer it back across to the piece. But practicing a scale like that has its own value. I don't think you need probably for me to be telling you about practicing scales in different rhythms. I'm sure we all do that. But just a word of, um, well, I suppose advice is make sure that if you're doing a dotted rhythm that it's really precise. Because a lot of people do some parts of the dotted rhythm snappily and other parts sluggishly, which is no good. So. And the other, one thing I'm doing that I think is very important is on the long note, I'm making sure that I'm not key bedding. In other words, not pushing into the key. Etc. Then perhaps I could work in bigger groups, maybe groups of four. So I'm starting off with a slow note and then there's an impulse of faster notes towards the next slow note. So I'm thinking of a, of a mini crescendo. Yum, pa 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 pam, pa 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 pam. And when I get to the long note, I'm switching off any effort so that I'm not pushing into my keyboard. I'm just balanced on that key. Balanced on that key. So if you have, do you see what I'm doing? I'm just showing you how loose I am by moving around. Don't move around, you don't need to do that, but it, I'm just using that to show you. Now, uh, just a couple of other useful variants on a scale. How about playing one hand where, where, the, where you play a note twice? and then obviously the other way around. This is rather a neat way to really embed fingering. What I'm doing is it, it, it's, a, it's like making trills out of the notes of the scale, the degrees of the scale. This is C major. I really have to know my fingering. very useful for practice. Um, if you need a little bit of lubrication in your thumb, you want to make your thumb a bit more flexible, we can do this scale, which starts off on a thumb. Let me choose a nice uh, mixture of blacks and whites. I'm going to only finger with one and two. And then come down, equalize the touch, and now, without stopping, one and three. That's awkward, I've got to get my thumb inside the black key area there, and then back out again. That takes a little bit of organization. The movements take a little organization. If you want, you can go, go with one and four, and if you're feeling really brave, one and five. A Couple other thoughts um, before I stop. Try this, take the C major fingering, which we all know very well. Uh, one thing that helps, I think, with C major fingering is to know that the third fingers always come together. Three, three, three. So whenever you've got a third finger in one hand, you've got a third finger in the other hand. Now, let's try that with, let's say, E flat major. But I'm fingering it. 
as an exercise with C major fingering. That's a very good warm-up exercise for an advanced pianist who really wants to get the, get the hand really flexible before their practice. We can also practice all groups of five. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So two octaves, that's three groups, one to five, one to five, one to five. Um, I can't leave a demonstration on scale practice without mentioning the Russian scale. Um, do we know the Russian scale? This is where we combine elements of similar motion and contrary motion. So two octaves, I'm going to show you the simplest form. Two octaves up. Two octaves out. Two octaves in. And then two octaves down. That's a really neat thing to practice. Um, and I'm going to leave you with a method that Rachmaninoff and the Russian school uh, really relied on, which is starting the scale from different degrees. So if I pick the note C, um, it's a good, good note to start on for pianists. We all seem to gravitate towards C, don't we? So I'm now going to play the scale of C two octaves. I'm going to play the scale of B flat major two octaves from C to C. So I'm, I'm starting on my second degree of the scale. Yeah, and then let me go on one more. A flat major from the third degree from C to C. You get the idea, then it would be G major from the fourth degree, F major from the fifth degree, and so on. Just think how flexible your brain would be. Think how, uh, how well you would know your scales from um, that way of practicing, that the way that Rachmaninoff used to practice his scales. So just remember with scales, we need a steady pulse. We need to feel rhythm in our scales, not just boring note, 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 groups of notes. We need an exciting rhythmic drive or an expressive rhythmic drive. Um, we need subtle dynamic shaping, perhaps a little bit of a crescendo to the top and a little bit of a diminuendo to the bottom. And we always need to pay attention to quality of tone and character. I hope that gave you some ideas and I look forward to seeing you again soon.